Hello and welcome back to Let's Play Rogue Trader with me, Regaton. Let's head to the Deadlands of Keita Tamer and track down Trevantius. Homunculus is laboratory. Or laboratory. Let us not dawdle. This place is awful human looking. A thick layer of ancient dust covers the walls, floor, and equipment. Rise to the top, or get left. What is that stink? Is it coming from your cell? Are you brewing Fenrisian Nyad in there? I've heard of the stuff. I wouldn't say no to a taste. Ah, uh, Nyad would eat away at your stomach and liver, Swindler. Are you not satisfied with the number of augments you already have? Uh, content yourself with sipping on booze intended for uh, ordinary mortals. And Miyad would most likely kill an ordinary human. The furnishings are clearly fitted for human comfort, but everything is covered in a thick layer of dust. Keep your wits about you. There is a seal of silence in the cogitator, but it is not difficult to break it. The machine spirit has been tormented. Someone ripped every bit of useful knowledge from its memory. I always have a backup plan. Neurosurgical stimulation of the rear part of the hypothalamus? Required for what? An alpha and beta grotesque. We've seen grotesques before. Alpha synthetic bond. The death of this creature enrages and strengthens its cogener. Cogener means they share a genus. They're the same species. I don't see that word very often. Oh. Oh, that's alright. That's less alright. Oopsies. Why are there two less now? I can do that with the right incentive. Am I getting paid for this? I don't know where Argenta is going to end up. I can do that with the right incentive. Tell me, and it is done. Pay attention. I'll do it. <laughs> I 
Your place is empty. Doubt is for the weak. resides in the will of the righteous. This is why I was chosen. I'll do it. Faith without deeds is worthless. I'll take that. I'll do it. Eradicated. And finish him off with a kick. <laughs> or close Doubt to is for the weak. Keep your eye on the price. Is there money to be made? Well, that's unfortunate. From a distance, the creature resembles a homunculus, but at a closer look, it's more of a bad caricature of one. Pieces of flesh, skin, and bone are stuck in the dark, sticky sludge that covers the tables. The Inquisition taught me many things. The deformed, feeble, and crazed creature is a pitiful and clearly unviable copy of the homunculus Tervantius. Let's not dawdle. I always keep my options open. A space wolf never fails in their duty. Both strong and wise is Ulfar. The corpse and tech priest's garb was shot in the head, more like a cold-blooded execution than a death in combat. Rise to the top or get left in the dust.
There. Cast your eye there. Easily done. Well, I'm not sure which way is the way forward. Lift call panel is unresponsive. A job for me. I thought that wasn't tied to that cogitator that we failed to check on. The cage bars and floor are covered in... Yeah, are covered and caked on blood. I read that at first. The Xeno's torture device has been placed out in the open. It clearly sees regular use. So maybe the elevators for after the fight with Trevantius? Assuming that he's in this chamber. Always keep your eye on the prize. You're looking at several completely identical homunculi at work. A disturbing sight. The indistinguishable and familiar faces turn their attention toward you, morosely and almost indifferently. The homunculi start talking over one another. You. One of them hisses through his teeth. How dare you, echoes another. Show up here alive. Our third one finishes. This is even better, though. Now I'll cleanse the shame of my death with your blood, and then transform you, and the scum you've brought along, into something useful. Examine the homunculi. The homunculi are twitching slightly, as though from invisible electric impulses. They look virtually identical, yet each seems to be missing something. A limb, an implant, even a facial feature or two. The single gaze of many of the many faces no longer seems full of haughty superiority only. Some kind of a shared defect also shows in it. I killed you with my own hands. A meat giggle rolls like a wave between the homunculi. They answer all at once, an ominous choir filling up the room. Have you forgotten that I am a great master of the flesh who has transcended death itself? You think it would befit me to let a monkai cut my path short? What is this place? It does not exactly look like a Jukari laboratory. A stupid question, the answer to which is of no importance to one who is about to be taken apart. But why are you here and not in Kimura? Because of you, specimen. Because of your feeble wits and your deplorable stubborn reluctance to die. In the thick silence, several clicks are heard as the copies move their limbs in an insect-like fashion. But I had to finish what I had started. Finish the masterpiece that had been taken away from me. Because of you. All because of you. I see you found new company, Trevantius. I haven't finished yet. The monkey light breaking into psychotic laughter. One corporal shell is too few. Deplor deplorably, unacceptably few. Once my work is complete, not one monkey in the world will be able to destroy me completely. Look at that despicable ash mag, Shireen. He still has hope of surviving our meeting. Am I talking to one Trevantius or several? Is each of you a separate individual? One? Many? What difference does it make? I'm on my way toward infinity specimen. For genuine, limitless immortality. That hole in the ceiling is a peculiar design choice. What happened here? The identical faces look annoyed and spiteful. For a moment, it seems the homunculi are about to reply in unison, but a barely perceptible electrical impulse stops them. One of them scoffs and mutters through his teeth. Just more proof of how unreliable partnerships with lower life forms are. You notice one of the homunculi glance at the hole in the ceiling. Yuri contorts the Xenos' face. 
Devontius is unable to hide his anger at what happened. Whoever did that, and whatever it was that they did, it infuriated him a lot. I've seen the body of a dead tech priest in this lab. Where did he come from? Explain. The homunculi are quiet, and then they giggle. The revolting sound makes your skin crawl. It's scary, isn't it? The thought that you're not the only Monkai who serves me. Try and guess, specimen. Try and guess. I'll turn this place inside out to find out who has conspired with the Xenos. I've had it with traitors among the ranks of humanity. Heinrichs' voice overflows with anger and bitterness. Alright, um... These are both going to lead to battle, so I'm going to go with option four. A death to Xeno scum. You're different from others of your species specimen. This time around, I want to study you much, and I mean much more thoroughly, which necessitates your death. And I hope dying once doesn't suffice for you. Your kind has no right to exist. I will revel in your pain. I'm guessing they're all tied together somehow. Just an instrument. Upon death spawns a gas cloud that will dissipate after two rounds. The gas heals allies of the fallen creature for 50% of their maximum wounds if they stay in the cloud for one round. Thriving in pain. When this creature's wounds drop below 50%, it gains a 15% bonus to critical hit chance and suffers a bleeding effect. If the bleeding effect is removed, it is inflicted again at the start of this creature's turn. Well, they'll probably be one shot, so I'm not too worried about that. And I don't think these are new. Experimental stem might be, but we can't read what it does. Indeed. Victory is imminent. The Emperor is on our side. You've got a problem, I've got a price. Am I getting paid for this? I'll do it. Well, that's convenient. This guy didn't burst into a toxic cloud. Faith without deeds is worthless. It's nothing. All 
That was a pretty good opening turn. A born predator does not become prey! You bite like a bomb! God Emperor, move through me! Be the fire in my heart! As the Emperor commands, I... for the weak. Okay. <laughs> well, I think Argento's got things wrapped up nicely. In thy light I stand, and thy light I crave. is a prayer. Oh, we have to destroy these. Well, sorry. <laughs> I'll do it. Your death is approaching. Oh, wow. Well. Your suffering will sustain me. Well, that was cute. For the throne's glory, be gone. Let's see to it. But of course, Lord Captain. I'll see to it personally. It's as good as done. The fame hungry come. I tried. So it's your my hand is thunder. My and executed. So I'm guessing the tech priest that we saw earlier in the dungeon was a Magos biologist. Not sure why they were working I the Jukari, have though. A backup plan. Blood Barrier Emitter. 
At the start of their turn, the wearer recovers wounds equal to the number of bleeding creatures. At least one wound was recovered that way. One fresh injury is removed from the wearer as well. Arch Machinator's Deceit Whenever the wearer uses an attack that is of a different type than the previous attack, they gain momentum equal to their resolve. And Homunculus's Injector Stores wounds, removes bleeding, burning, toxin, and melting, heals one trauma and all injuries without skill tests. Is there money to be made? There's a uh, Arch Machinator. Hard to pronounce both ways. A uh, damage data slate. Actually, before I do that, let's uh. I'm at your service. Injuries will not slow me. Except Argenta. If such is the Emperor's will. Alright, damage data slate. There's a dent on the data slate screen, covered in flickering colored stripes. The readable parts are twitchy and contain repetitions. Numerous prior studies pursued the goal of breaking new ground and recreating and reviving the specimen in the event of its death. The above mentioned experiment lay the groundwork for modernizing and accelerating the recreation of a living organism from a minuscule sample of bone or muscle tissue. Every variety of living organism has been observed to release a number of chemicals at the moment of death that enable the creation of an entirely identical clone, with intact memories of its prior life up to and including the moment of death, most vividly detailed as to both physical sensations and emotional distress. As mentioned before, even a tiny modicum of bone or muscle tissue is sufficient for reviving or creating an organism in an adequate lab setup. Bear in mind that work on creating the new body must begin before the third stage of decomposition is set in. The space around the hollow is littered with lumps of broken concrete. A small wind gets into the room through the ugly hole in the ceiling, throwing up whirlwinds of stone dust at your feet. The hole in the lab's vaulted ceiling and the hollow underneath it point you to the obvious. The hole in the lab's vaulted ceiling and the hollow underneath point you to the obvious. Only it needs it there. Oh no, never mind, that does make sense. Sorry, I was misreading that too. Uh, something broke into this room, ripped out a piece of the lab, and dragged it outside. You are for now, mystified as to what that something was. I'll take a closer look around. Through the pot up rocks, dirt, and thick dust, you're able to make out parts of fixtures that were ripped out of their sockets and thrown to the floor. Parts like these are used for fastening industrial girders in place at large manufacturums around the Imperium. Try to surmise what destroyed the lab ceiling. You study the edges of the breach carefully, reflect for a few minutes, and conclude that the hole in the lab ceiling was blown by several powerful directed explosions. After some more time, you note the characteristic marks of the debris in the walls. The ceiling was breached using melted charges. Address your companions. What do you think about all this? The Seneschal looks around, frowning. I don't understand. The car machinery and their toys seem out of place within these walls. Nay, they seem positively alien. These walls. Why, this is the standard architecture of an Imperium bunker. Why would Azinos conduct their business in a place like this? That's what I was wondering. They would if they were going to do business with members of humanity. Heinrich's voice is dull and quiet, as if the interrogator had suddenly been drained of all his strength. But interrogator, who? Cold traders, privateers, rogue traders. Heinrich breaks off, as if stalling at the last moment. Mutually profitable commerce with Zenos is not that uncommon, Abelard. And that was what went on in this place. A place built by humans, and furnished by the Jukari. The work is precise, though not the neatest. Whoever did this clearly knew what they were looking for and where to strike. Just look at the edges of the breach, Shireen. They were definitely ripped apart by a targeted blast. Step away. Broken stairs added an empty spot where all that's left is a shattered floor and a small hollow. I always keep my options open. Uh, 
Let us not dawdle. I'm still guessing this is tied to the elevator somehow. Of course, we failed this check, so always keep your eye on the price. Can't access that either. But looks like the door is over here, which is not where the elevator lines up at. I'm not sure. Uh, let's level up real quick. Uh, so we get a first or second tier archetype talent and a common talent. Uh, let's do be vigilant. Allies under the effect of the officer's abilities get a bonus to their weapon skill equal to three plus officer's fellowship bonus. And we'll deal plus 9 more damage on attacks of opportunity at the start of the officer's next turn. This works really well in Abelard because he'll take advantage of both effects. And increased weapon skill is good for Ulfar, Heinrichs, and Abelard. And a common talent. I think I'm going to do power armor, though... No, I like my heavy armor. I think it's actually better than the power armor that we have. I think I'll just do dual weapon combat. Uh, the character can attack with the second weapon in their current weapon set in addition to the usual one attack per round. This attack suffers a minus 20 penalty to weapon skill and ballistic skill and costs plus 1 AP more. But I can use my bring it down ability. And it doesn't need to land, so I can use that as my follow-up attack at the with the penalty on whoever I want to use it on. Uh, let's do Impetus. The damage dealt by charge is increased by toughness bonus plus strength bonus, which are his... Well, I guess it's toughness and weapon skill. But then strength. When the ability is used from a distance of five or more cells. And it will not die. Increases wounds by half of the character's level rounded up. Now let's do point blank. All the soldiers' area attacks gain percent armor penetration and ignore deflection when used against enemies in a 3-cell radius around the soldier. I'm going to give him... Already has it. Well, in that case...
Let's do trusty weapons. I assume at some point he'll get a power axe, as we see in his artwork. We'll strive towards that. If not, it's not his first wasted talent, so it's not a big deal. Let's do Revel and Slaughter. Revel and Slaughter can be used after two kills instead of three. Not that she has a problem getting three kills on her turn. Oh yeah, overpower. When firing heavy weapons, critical hit chances increase by ballistic skill bonus percent. Critical damage is increased by percentage, also scaling with ballistic skill. Overlook that, that's fantastic. Heinrichs, uh, let's go and do Psyker Extremis. Each level of Psy rating provides a Psyker access to new psychic powers. It also strengthens damaging psychic powers. More damage with his Sword of Faith. Well, actually, I do that as a common talent, can I? Let's actually change this. Uh, Desolation seems pretty good. Let's do Empidus instead. The damage dealt by charge is increased by... Well, we just read this with Abelard. We don't need to read it again. It just boosts charge. And then here we'll do Psyker Extremis. And then Jai. I guess Blood of Martyrs. Whenever an ally uses a heroic act, the ally gains temporary wounds equal to 10% of their maximum wounds plus resolve. Uh, we're taking a fair bit of damage. Heinrichs got taken out in that one fight, and Argenta took a fair bit of damage against Cervantius. So while I'm not super concerned, I do want to play it a little safer. Possibly it will not die just for a little extra tankiness. Or. Let's do logic. We keep failing these logic checks. I feel like it's costing us a fair bit of lore. And in this case, possibly loot. One day. I shall remind Ruvestum that he was ready to bury my family based on some trumped-up charges. One day. But not now. The only difference between high society squabbles and squabbles down in the gutter is defined clothes. If you want to quietly get rid of the scoundrel, you know who to call, old man. Now would you look at that? I better myself yeah, through close my to that service. Trap. Thank Ross for my sharp senses. The Emperor sets my path. The Emperor favors me today. Toxic Flamer. Flamer's attacks also inflict toxin at the same level as burning is inflicted. But it's not a heavy flamer, so I'm not going to use that. But I can see builds with that. 
I always have a backup plan. The concentrators are deep in dreamless slumber. The second unjoints on their connection ports have long since dried. Rise to the top, or get left in the dust. Strange log. The notebook contains detailed observations, formulae, and diagrams. It is thickly covered in a viscous, greenish liquid. Almost all pages are firmly glued together. Their contents turn into blurry stains. Experiment number 78, Outcome Failure. Object capable of maintaining minimal vital vitality. Falls short of every... Query? A degree of... Physical abnormalities, deformities unacceptable. Failure. Upon being removed from the capsule, the subject's vital grow something processes cease in an excruciating manner following a brain hemorrhage and multiple internal bleeding. Experiment number 13, outcome partial success, specimen capable of maintaining basic vital processes, only if continually neurally stimulated by means of drilling through the elbow, knee, and hip joints. Experiment number 21, outcome U. Uh, the last six subjects conform to the minimum requirements, but their capabilities are limited. They're incapable of learning, no capacity for something of the original organism. So I'm guessing if we were able to get that elevator up, there'd be a chest on that as well. So we're probably missing some unique loot because we can't activate the elevator, which I'm assuming is tied to the uh, cogitator here. Which doesn't make a lot of sense. Why would the elevator be tied to that when it's all the way over here? I wonder if I missed something back here. Let's go back and check one more time. It's possible I walked past the perception check. Just like we did at the beginning Was of the dungeon. That supposed to be I a always keep my options open. Activate the elevator. Yeah, I don't see why I'd be tied to that other cogitator, but it might be. Always keep your eye on the prize. A space wolf never fails in their duty. Keep your wits about you. Alright, we'll go back to the beginning of the dungeon. We'll park. We won't actually go back to the ship yet. In case there's a conversation as soon as we go back. But next time we'll go back to the ship and I guess head towards Footfall. If there's any events on the way there, we'll take care of that too. But for now, thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next one.